this is going to be a demonstration in a type of gesture called spatial gesture or the diagrammatic line. Um, in this sketch, there are red lines that I'll be talking about in a minute. Um, I did this drawing as a demonstration with a class a few summers back. Um, we went down to the marina and the marina is a good subject for this type of exercise because there are, it's so complex. There are all these vertical masts. The piers are seen in perspective. Um, in fact, here we have the sailboats and the piers and the skyline of Milwaukee in the distance. So a, a great deep space, but very complex, not the kind of perspective drawing where you could just get out a yardstick and draw the railroad tracks going into the distance. Um, sometimes things like this can be confusing. Um, and how, how do you lay it out on the page? This spatial gesture, the red line here, um, is a searching line. It's very rapid and intuitive where you are imagining that your line is like a string being pulled from one point to another. Often we talk about gesture as being contained within the volume of a form. Um, in our last demonstration, we looked at the space within a paper bag. Um, here, we are really thinking about the space between one object and another. How far is it from me to the sailboat mast? How far is it from that mast to the skyscraper in the, in the distance? How far is it from that skyscraper back to um, a post in the foreground of the image? Um, so it's almost like you're creating a connect the dots picture where you are locating those dots and then sort of connecting all the dots the wrong way before you actually draw the objects in their place. So today I've set up a smaller still life. Um, it works with any kind of a space with multiple elements. Um, if we were in a classroom situation, I would probably set some chairs upside down and in a pile all over the room and it would provide us all these different points to locate in space. Um, but this, this will, I think, do for now. So what I'm going to be doing is um, imagining that I'm starting with the point of this bell. Um, this is like my little pointer obelisk in the still life. So providing a very nice center starting point where I can locate other objects in relationship to this point. So I might move from that point to the top of the Buddha head, um, the flame at the top of his head. Then I might imagine a line connecting that point to the top of this other statue's head and maybe from that head back to the bell and from the bell to this object um, and maybe from this down to the bottom and back up and just bouncing, ping-ponging around, boom, 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 all around within that space um, until I'm very satisfied that I understand where all those points should be located in the drawing. Um, so what I'm going to start out with here is going to end up looking a little bit like a, a web, um, but the objects will not be there really at all um, until later on in the process. So I'll do this. Uh, normally, we would want to do this with a very faint light line light and searching. Um, I will be drawing darker than I would want you to draw so that it is more visible in this video. Um, okay, so 
And normally I would not even look at the board for a while. I would really try to project my mind into that space and convince myself that I'm measuring and feeling the distance within that area. Okay, so starting there. And you can revisit spots multiple times in something like this. Um, your first impulse might not be accurate, so it's definitely okay to go back and refine those, those points. And I'm trying to see if this will all fit on the page also. So I might decide I need to shift a point over, move something down. Sometimes I think that these drawings look like um, maybe dance diagrams that would show you where your feet should move. It's about the movement really through, through the space. And so you start to see a lot of diagonal lines here. And as we have talked about previously, I think diagonals imply perspective um, and that helps a lot here as well. Okay. So now we have a lot of points and I've moved points around but I have a basic idea about where points will be. That's really the spatial gesture aspect of this drawing. Now, um, I also want to sort of superimpose on here the idea of perceptual grid. If I were to take a photo of the still life, it would be very easy to take that photo later and to draw a grid on that photo. And that way we would see, oh, this object lines up with this other object. That's a little harder to do when you're looking at the actual objects, but it's the same idea. So I might imagine from one point, let's say it's this point. Um, and sometimes you can do this with your pencil even. Hold a horizontal line from that point across and see what other elements line up along that same line. This is now perceptual grid. So if I know this Buddha's head is, is, the top of it is here, I can imagine as I go in a horizontal line across, right, what other things line up with that, that same horizontal line. And I can just make sure as well with my points that those things are working out. Maybe I can do that with some other elements as well. Um, if I imagine from the top of the bell in a horizontal line, I can see maybe that lines up visually with um, the chin of this other Buddha. So as I dr draw another horizontal line across there, I can know that that's what, where that point will be. Um, and you can do this with vertical lines also. Um, I could drop a vertical line from this statue's nose straight down and see what lines up with that vertical line um, as well. But, so that, that's the idea of this 
laying this perceptual grid where you could imagine horizontals and verticals that are not there just to make sure your placement of everything is correct. So this does not look like these objects yet, but I know now from doing these marks where everything should go and how big they should be on the page and how they relate to each other. So, um, maybe I should go back to this, this bell. Shift it a little to here. Okay, so my bell, perhaps, I'm right drawing now the axial line of the bell and I'm just giving myself some marks to start to feel where those objects are in a little bit greater detail. This is this Buddha's hand now. And maybe I'm going to shift the top of his head a little. He's pretty small though. Maybe it is there. Um, and you can go back as you're doing this and still search some more with the spatial gesture. So. I might feel from here now all the way back to the bottom of that, see where that relationship is. I could use a vertical perceptual grid line running vertically from this head to see, okay, the ear on that statue behind almost lines up with that point. here, chin, and I already found with this horizontal line that this Buddha's chin is just slightly above that line, so I can sort of place that in that space. Again, I'm doing this darker than you would want to in most situations. This should be a very light line just to help you place elements. Maybe I should start to draw some of the objects in a little bit more so that you guys can see what all these lines were, were doing.
slower now. I have an idea, better idea where everything is. Honestly, I'm, I'm rushing this for the video because this would, would be a long, long video if I were to do this at maybe the normal speed, <laughs> but and you can still shift things around a little bit if you decide something needs to be shifted before you get a lot of detail it's it's easy to make those changes 